Hello everyone. I am so glad to be joining with you guys again today. I'm Rashika, one of the co-founders at ProApp. A very good evening, morning and afternoon to all of you who have joined us today on a Friday evening in India at least it is. So today's topic is around how you can create a memorable experience for your users using micro, micro interactions in your UX design. And we have Aditya today with us. Aditya is an experienced digital product designer with a strong record in e-commerce education cloud-based system for that. He's currently working as a UX designer at Microsoft. He believes that design should be based on our personal experiences to better connect with us. And I think I couldn't agree more with it. it and when you connect with the users, we can create better functional, more frugal and impactful experiences. He enjoys discussing how design influences the world in many ways. And it becomes much more exciting when it becomes real. Adite, the stage is all yours. Thanks, Rashika, first of all, for this wonderful introduction. I think I don't need to introduce much more than this. Yeah, so glad to be part of uh, part of this event here. And uh, yeah, so starting with that, I will just share my screen. And so hello, everyone. So I'll give a little introduction about uh, that session, what is about today. So we are going to talk about how motion impacts UX. What is the role of motion and how we can leverage motion for increasing the experience, increasing the uh, increasing the usability of a application or a, any app that we are developing. So whenever we start off designing an application, we start with understanding what, what is the use case, what is the research that we are going around, we are doing around the problem statement that we have selected. But at the end, when you start with the ideation and when you reach to the part of the wireframing or mock-up creation, that is the point where you have to you have to decide what kind of intro, what kind of interactions would happen, how the user would interact with the application, because creating the mockups or the high fidelity screens is not the not everything. If it is going to be functional, it has to be an interactive thing, right? So for the for the same reason, you create interactive. Uh, prototypes and when you create interactive prototypes so you have to think of motion uh, you have to think of how things will uh, come come on the screen what things will come first what thing will come last and how those things how those small gaps of interaction would be managed so this is the point where motion becomes important for the you know for the user experience how user experience is impacted with the motion and for the same, so we are going to talk uh, some some very interesting things about uh, about those that particular part today. So, what is the role of your motion in UX? What are the micro interactions? How do we go ahead and build the micro interaction? And we'll be seeing a little hands on on After Effects and converting those uh, converting some motion uh, motion design, and then then that will be converting into lotty lotty effect lotty files. And at the end of the session, we'll be taking question answers. If you, if you guys have any question answers, I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So let's start. So uh, uh, a little introduction uh, apart from uh, what what Rashika has uh, told about myself. So right now I'm working as a uh, designer at uh, Microsoft for uh, so here I'm part of the communication teams and I take care of multiple products under that domain and then I am responsible for doing research and design. Prior to working at Microsoft I have done my master's in interaction design from National Institute of Design and I worked at different organizations ranging from Amazon where I was working as a visual and motion designer and at an academy I was working as a design lead and uh, at Rapido, I worked as a UX researcher and a startup called as Preimage. So there I worked for their end-to-end -end creation of their product experience, including the visual design, the research, and the motion uh, and branding. So that is a profile of the kind of work that I've been doing. And yeah, here I am. So coming on, so coming on to the presentation. <clears throat> So you are you are going uh, you you will be uh, you will be seeing these uh, smaller animations, 
So I purposefully put it, uh, put it uh, these interactions because these are the some, these are some of the micro interactions which which you might see, which you might ideate on that. So glimpse of this. Uh, so be best part would be I would keep give, giving you a glance of it so that you can understand how in what different contexts it can be used. And then later on we'll be discussing. If you have any question, if we, we will have a. Uh, interactive activity where we'll be seeing how we are going to develop a micro, micro interaction, what these micro interactions mean. So yeah, so starting with motion, we'll start with the motion itself, with them before talking about UX, before talking about anything, we'll talk about motion, what motion is. So motion is anything, uh, motion, is, uh, motion is a way to communicate design to the users. So let's say, so the interaction that you're seeing on the screen, whatever is happening, you are seeing that person is swiping or tapping or scrolling up, scrolling down, something is happening. So it is not a one time. So if, if uh, it, it, it would have happened with you as well, like you, you like something on screen, some animation on screen, and you keep engaged, you keep engaged with that, you keep uh, interacting with that. And that is that is the that is the reason why it has been created for motion. Their first thing which is happening is they are communicating the design which is created to you as a user, and at the same time they are taking that uh, that leverage of engagement while you do all these things. Suppose a very basic example from uh, 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 at like a very basic thing, very basic example where a motion can be a very breakthrough. Let's say you are downloading a file. So you are downloading a file or you are copying a file. You would have definitely seen a, uh, you would have definitely seen a animation which, which happens. So file is going from one folder to another, right? Or maybe some other kind of uh, in, uh, animation you would have seen. Like if you see, uh, if you see in Windows or uh, maybe Mac, you would definitely see some kind of animation happening. It is not, it is not a, uh, like it is not a signifier of exactly how much time it takes to uh, do certain things, but it is just a, a signifier of an engagement that you keep on seeing. Let's say a file is going to take five minutes to copy, but uh, to make your five minutes of experience more engaging or more uh, like binding, those interactions are introduced, those motion uh, motion design is introduced. So those motions we call as micro interactions that we'll be going to see in the next uh, coming slides. And this leads to, this leads, this all leads to a domain called as motion based design. So all these design, which we talk about, which we call in the, uh, in the domain, like we are talking about motion in UX. So we will talk, uh, we, we talk in context of motion based design because we are using or we are leveraging motion for creating any kind of design, creating any kind of engagement. And this leads to two different things. Like uh, first is like uh, motion, uh, motion helps, uh, motion uh, design helps in understanding how the information, different kind of information is organized in an application. Uh, how it can be displayed to the user. Let's say a heading comes first and then paragraph comes and so on. Maybe CTA comes after. That can be one uh, one kind of, and that this this comes under how information is organized. And second is motion drives the journey of, uh, motion drives the journey of creating natural experiences. Let's say, uh, how you run, how you do certain things. And so if you if you dissect the motion associated with that, and if the same kind of motion is associated with the product that you are using, that becomes more relatable. Let's say. Uh, let's say uh, you start running, you you start running or you start sprinting. How you would start? You would not start like you're not start uh, a con on a constant speed. You start slow and then you start getting a speed, and then when you stop, you you slow down and then you finally stop. So that that whole process is not linear, right? The whole process is not linear. Linear as in from the end to start to end, everything remains constant. It never happens when you do certain things. It's a pace. So whenever we talk about pace, same thing is happen. Same thing applies to applying motion also into the design. 
and when we to take that experience from the natural things of happening around us that makes more engagement let's say yes it started but yeah it is happening naturally right why it's needed in ux so when when we talk about these two topics so we 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 have to understand why why it is actually needed in ux so ux uh, as you would, uh, as you would all know that yeah ux is user experience right so if uh, if anyone if you have any questions please please keep it uh, keep, keep it noted we'll take it uh, in the last when everything is covered so yeah coming on to why it is you uh, like uh, why it is needed in ux so before to understand before understanding why it is needed in ux we have to understand that for any product that that is being created does our user ask these questions or not for whatever product for whatever app design we are creating is my user asking these questions like what is the most important thing that i am seeing on the screen what what is the thing that i am going to do next and how do i know how, how do i know that i completed a task right you created a con, you create a confirmation screen right you create a confirmation screen so that you give the uh, you give user information about yes this task has been completed and the same thing you would be able to understand if you consider uh, needs uh, like 10 usability heuristics if you if you take 10 usability heuristic the first one that you will see is the visibility of the system status right if you can relate to what i'm saying so this is the same thing which is happening did i complete my task relate to that particular heuristic that yes are you giving user that feedback that yes the task is abrupted or completed or whatever is the state are you uh, are you signifying this the same state to the user or not so those uh, those things how will you convey to the user so that is where interaction comes into place and that is where motion or micro interaction come to, comes into place so these all three questions that you are seeing on the screen are the trigger points of creating any kind of uh, motion in the design or creating or including any kind of uh, motion or micro interaction in the design process right and if we if we if we want to understand that where this uh, particular motion uh, like motion and ux will fall in the complete design process so it would mostly fall in in the in the place where you have done your low fidelity wireframes you are working with the visual design or you would have completed with the with the visual design and after that you have to create interactive prototype so that is the point where you have to think of small small things what are the interaction that user is doing how my user is going to use my app so when you dissect this part how my user is going to use my app that is where you try to simplify small small things yes this is the point that that my user is going to spend a lot of time to let's introduce a micro interaction let's introduce the gamification or let's introduce some kind of engagement activity right gamification can be one reward based thing yes that's a whole new concept but that's a wider concept uh, micro interactions or motion doesn't require gamification it can be a standalone thing right but gamification is a bigger uh, bigger let's say uh, a download file is getting downloaded i have to wait for five seconds there i cannot introduce gamification just for five seconds it doesn't make sense but yes i can introduce any kind of animation or any kind of things which is happening like animated illustrations i can introduce right so those things we can introduce and we when we ask these kind of questions so this reveal opportunities for us to enhance the experience and when we say that so this becomes directly proportional so uh, when when we say this this become directly proportional to the experience that we are going to the going to give to the user which is we are what tool we are utilizing to give user the experience that he wants but yes in a very simplified manner in a very simplified manner we are uh, we are allowing the user to do certain things right in a way that user is doing it, user is engaging with it but still they, they are not very mindful yes i am doing it so that is the kind of user experience you have to give to the user that they are able to complete the task that they want but at the same time they are not 
they, they are not interrupted in that complete process, right? So these are objectives how we can find by asking the right questions to the user, which are more contextual, right? And this all leads to three three major things. And this all uh, things related to motion, which, which we are talking, this leads to three major things of which first is, how do we drive users attention to any object? And how do we hint, uh, hint the user that, yes, this particular thing means this, this particular thing will lead to this kind of interaction, right? Let's say as, as, as shown in the UI that you're seeing on the screen, you're seeing that yes, some interaction is hap happening at the floating action button. And then it is leading to opening of a calendar, right? Calendar or a you know, date picker. So those kind of interaction, like like that, that is also a part of uh, like how how motion is included in the design. Like how how do you drive the user's attention that this button, if I click on this button, this will lead to this. Now, if I if I say if I say to you this that this interaction you have to create, you will create two different screens, right? First screen you will create with the button, second screen you will create with the yellow complete opened up, right? So to show the transition between two states, you have to show something in the form of motion, right? So that is where this plays an important role. Second part, providing guided focus between views. So when these views are changing, let's say you are transitioning from one view to another view, right? You are transitioning from one view to another view, how this is going to take shape. You have to understand that. So when you are when you use the motion in the right way, so later on we'll be going to understand what are the different principle uh, principles in motion, or how how do these motion in uh, UX principles work? So everything is based on some kind of principle that so there are almost ten to twelve UX motion principles which are applicable in these cases. So. It is a kind of sequence of events which leads to uh, which leads user to understand that yes, if I click this particular button, this interaction is going to happen. This is going to pop up. This is going to open, right? And that is kind of a signifying thing. Yes, so it, it helps in creating the navigation between the application. So we talk about user flow. We talk about information architecture how you are going to complement that user flow and information architecture in the actual app. So these are the, those are small driving factors which, which enhances the user flow. It helps in understanding that yes, we are going through the right user flow in the complete design process, right? And the third one is visual feedback. Visual feedback, this thing you would have definitely seen in some or, some or the another, another way that you, you complete something, let's say, Taking take example of Duolingo, right? Taking example of Duolingo, uh, you complete a lesson and you, then it shows that yes, you have completed this uh, this lesson and it gives you some kind of reward, maybe some gem, some kind of boost or something. Similarly, some if you achieve something, there's a kind of feedback or some if something is accomplished, there's kind of feedback which is uh, which which is uh, displayed to the user. So this is the third kind of thing which you will get when you include motion in the design, right? Till this point, uh, am I clear to, uh, till this point, everyone, please, uh, please hit yes in the chat. Yes. Cool. Coming on to the second part. So, and all of this, after all of this, what is the main main agenda? Main agenda, of what we are looking at. What what is the main agenda that we are looking at by including this motion? We are talking about engagement, right? How that engagement will come? Engagement only comes when a user likes anything, right? If the user does not like anything, that engagement will never come, right? So. To to create that engagement we, uh, or to make user like certain things, we have to create a delight factor, right? And for that reason, we create, we, we utilize motion in different kind of forms, right? Micro interactions are there or some kind of uh, button interaction, call to action interactions are there. Those we include 
to bring the sense of delightedness. Let's say you uh, you completed a lesson in Duolingo, uh, or let's say I will not quote Duolingo. Maybe someone doesn't. Uh, if someone doesn't know, let's say in a generic term, I am asking. Uh, I, I'll say that. Let's say I accomplish. I completed a certain kind of lesson. Let's say I I had a lesson to complete. I completed that lesson, right? I got ten coins. So that that is a delight factor. That is a positive thing. But if I just put a text that you got ten coins credited in your account, that might not create or that might not invoke the emotions in the user, right? But if a visual thing is given. If a visual thing is given, that emotion is invoked quickly. Let's take a very lame example of sharing memes. Let's take a very lame example of sharing memes. You you feel about certain things now. It's a trend that yes, we feel certain things uh, in a certain way, but we are not communicating in form of text. We are just putting a we are just putting a gif of meme, and people are able to understand what I what I mean, right? I, I'm happy. I'm posting a meme. I'm I'm down. I'm posting posting a meme, right? But that emotion is conveyed. If you take a positive part of sharing memes, that is creating engagement. That is the reason why it has become popular, right? That is a good thing we can take from things around us, right? So delight is a thing that you have to that that is that is there. Now we talked about role of motion in UX design, right? We talk about motion, role of motion in UX design, but now comes the important part: that how do we achieve it? What is the step to achieve it? What is the framework to achieve it? Right? Like the example of the question mark that you are seeing, that is a question mark uh, micro interactions from Google, right? You can you can quite clearly see from the colors that is being shown, and how that interaction is happening, right? This is a very simple interaction. But yes, you you see that and you you understand that that is from Google. So these things, when you have to create, how do you do? Do you go about it? So the answer is by creating or the, by building micro interactions, you can achieve these things by creating build micro interactions. So any kind of animations that where which you see on any application in form of some animation, like how this animation is happening, the the progress bar animation is happening on the with the astronaut. This is this is also a type of micro interaction only. Why this is micro interaction? Because if you see two parts of it, the animation is happening, right? So it is taking my attention that yes, astronaut is doing something. He has carried a phone. He is doing certain things, right? But if you see the other part, the progress is happening. So because that is a continuous, uh, a continuous loop of uh, animation that is happening, you'll keep, uh, you'll keep uh, this thing in mind. Yes, this is something. There's something more to come. Something more to come in the animation, right? That's a loop, looped animation, which is there. But during all this happens, the progress becomes complete. So by the time you you are engaged in those motion or animation, that is complete. So any certain this kind of motion, when it is included in UI, that will be termed as micro interaction. And if we go by the definition of micro interaction, what is uh, uh, what is micro interaction? So micro interactions provide feedback to the user. Um, um, micro Interactions provide feedback to, to the user whenever a user interacts with the system, interacts with the application, and provides the system status to the user, so that it gives a, sig a signal to the user that yes, you have done something. Yes, you have done something wrong. Or yes, uh, yes, uh, is there is something that you need to do? Right. These three uh, things will come out of these micro interactions, and how how the framework of these micro interactions work. It it works in this way. It's very simple. It's a very simple framework, which uh, uh, like a process of things which happens. Like user triggers some interaction, micro interactions happens. Let's say, for example, user completes a task. Some uh, like user completes a task. Let's say user submits a submits a test that he has given, right? That is the trigger that is uh, that is doing. Then after that, some micro interaction will happen. Let's 
let's say yes you have completed this test in a very short time yes so that is a micro interaction that happened feedback feedback just we uh, we discussed key yes you have you have completed this in this particular time right and then again user will go back to the cycle of interacting again with something which will lead to another micro interaction so this keeps on cycling and the system will and the, and the system's current status is provided in the same way with the help of micro interaction to the user right so user is not directly uh, related uh, to the system but the way uh, the way that information is portrayed on the application right now coming on to understanding why micro interactions why micro interactions only why not video why not song why why audio only so when we when we say that yes Uh, when we say that yes, uh, when we when we say that yes, we are going to be interactions. But why do why are using micro interactions? See the the factors we have already discussed a little while. But very specific to micro interaction, what happens? it is the first and foremost thing that it does is it creates uh, it encourages en engagement in some or the another form it drives people's attention so that they do something right system status they are already uh, like uh, showing what is happening what what is the result of the interaction that they did right providing er error prevention so providing error uh, prevention i'll give an example of a password the password uh, typing uh, interaction let's say when you are logging into gmail you typed incorrect password that come, that box becomes red right that box becomes red but if you type or type right it becomes green and it goes on to next step so that small uh, that small change in state is also a micro interaction which is uh, which which you are seeing right so that that kind of micro interaction is also very very minor kind of micro interaction which is happening right but still uh, it is helping user in some way right and communicating brand is something which happens let's say you would you like the example of question mark that i just showed right you you see that you will understand that yes that micro interaction is from google right how do we achieve that communicating that like uh, these mnc's and big brands do very widely like google uh, google's interaction you will see very evident that is they particularly use those four colors in their uh, in their animation so that you understand that if those four colors are there that means that animation or that some icon is there from google only right so that is that means why uh, that is what the fourth point means which is communicating the brand right so this was about my contraction now understanding what kind of different ui elements are there in the in the in the process that we use and what is the possibility uh, what, what is the possibility for us that we call them a micro interaction are they micro interaction or not if they are not what are they what are they and what is the reason behind it so scroll bar yes that is a micro interaction because you you tap it and then you scroll uh, then you slide it and some uh, something happens what happens your content gets scrolled your screen gets scrolled so so you are doing something something is happening uh, an, an element is moving from top part to the bottom part of the screen and it is leading to some kind of action which is happening on the screen to yes that is kind of micro interaction digital alarm yes that is a micro interaction because whenever an alarm beeps you get the you get the feedback that yes uh, a certain time has uh, has struck on the clock and then you need to do something button button it depends if the, uh, if uh, button is certain kind of button which is uh, let's say animated button if there is an animated button that that you can call it a, that that you can call as a micro interaction but if the button is just a button let's say click here and it goes to some other page then it will not be considered as micro interaction 
it will be more considered as call to action that yes i clicked that and then it took me to some other page pull to refresh animation yes that is a micro interaction you would be seeing in on instagram or maybe facebook or anything that is a micro interaction gifs no gifs are not micro interaction but because it does not involve any trigger whenever gif comes it just it starts uh, it just it starts playing so it is not a micro interaction email notification yes it's a micro interaction because you can interact with that swipe animation yes video player no because you video play, video player controls can be micro interactions right but video player cannot be a micro interaction that's a component in the ui right if you need uh, this deck I, I i'll be able to share it. or if you want to take a screenshot or something like that that you can do that's totally up on you and now we come to the main part of micro interaction framework that yes whenever we are building a micro interaction so how do we take it forward so whenever we are building micro interaction that involves majorly four kind of four types of steps so first is trigger first is trigger second is rule third is feedback and four is loops and modes right so decoding it uh, decoding it sequentially decoding is uh, it sequentially that first what is trigger means so if you are creating any animation or a uh, motion uh, related to a, a user experience how it will be opened how it will be invoked so that is called trigger let's say it can, trigger can be anything it can be swipe functionality it can be click functionality it can be slide functionality it can be swipe functionality whatever functionality is there that is that is what trigger uh, trigger is second is rule so rule is a uh, rule is a second part so rule says that what kind of thing will happen when you will when you will do the uh, when you will click the trigger when you will pull the trigger what kind of interaction would happen let's say uh, taking an example of delete button right everyone uh, uh, just let me know everyone has seen this uh, recycle bin uh, recycle bin icon on windows or maybe mac yes no has everyone seen have you have you ever uh, uh, noticed that yes whenever there is a uh, there is a file uh, file in the, the like recycle bin it shows filled and then if it is not then it is empty that is also a kind of a state and that is also can be considered as micro interaction because whenever you delete it right whenever you delete it you see that yes a delete uh, function or delete animation is happening right so that is the rule that is that is the rule that we uh, that i am talking about what happens after you click the trigger right second uh, third is feedback feedback is anything anything which is the result of these two things let's say mission is successful file is deleted or file is downloaded file is copied file is transferred or video video ended you got 10 coins you got got 20 coins whatever feedback is the result of micro interaction that 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 will be the end third part of it and fourth will be loops and modes whether your micro interaction is going to end there or further if it is going to lead somewhere else that is the fourth part you have to decide you have to mention rules yes even after this uh, this uh, this gets uh, done what is the next step which which happens so these kind of interaction you will be able to see on the onboarding maybe uh, i'm not sure how how many like uh, if if you go through any onboarding experience of of any app let's say you are going through uh, 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 like uh, just see uh, the onboarding of jupiter app like uh, i'll i'll suggest you the example exact example yes uh, definitely got uh, i'm coming to that point after this i'm coming to that point uh, how that uh, real world thing comes into micro interaction that's a very core of building micro interaction and that is the whole point of building micro interactions only right onboarding using gifs or micro interaction uh, i'm not talking about gifs i'm talking about micro interaction let's say uh, there's a interaction that happened on the screen but if you click next 
in the same micro interaction something else happens then if you click next then in the same uh, illustration again something happens right so that's a kind of loop that is happening loops and modes so even though it completed on one step still it was not complete because it is kind of loop that is going to next step next step next step so that is what fourth step is right so yeah so can I, showing you the like i'm showing you this example there see trigger is can you uh, can you tell what is the trigger here trigger is click right user is clicking something that is the trigger right now what is rule what is rule the rule is he yes if i click on this this gray line will become black right that is the rule that is the rule feedback is feedback is how the alignments uh, how the alignment is there how the alignment uh, of the text should be there that is the feedback that i am getting for whatever selections i am doing right and the fourth part fourth part here the modes and the modes will end here because there is no further mode this does not lead to any other step this is only limited to these three things right so fourth one is not applicable here given that you are you are considering this particular thing right maybe you 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 might come come up with something that uh, that will have this fourth state but yeah and while you create this micro interaction there are very few things uh, to keep to keep in mind like uh, think in terms of users like thinks uh, think in term in terms of what user will understand for with whatever kind of animation in micro interaction you are trying to create does the user uh, is the user able to relate to that or not if not then change the change the context of creating that animation right create functional animation what do you mean by creating functional animation so this is the this is the same point that gorav has mentioned that we take real life examples whenever we create micro interactions right that is the that is the thing we uh, that is the thing we have to do let's say if i tell you today that you have to build a new micro interaction for delete functionality on, on an application or a website right how will you come to that micro interaction how will you ideate that micro interaction look around look around how do you dispose things how do you dispose things how do you delete things how, how do you throw and throw or throw out things how do you like uh, recycle things right so those interactions will come from that let's say uh, let's say you are rolling out a paper you are just crumbling it and throwing in the dustbin that can that can be also a kind of micro interaction that you can show right another kind of micro interaction can also happen putting passwords like uh, like uh, incorrect password how do you show incorrect password right incorrect passwords how do you show it these things right so that is that that is what means by creating functional animation that yes it should be very much relatable to the real life scenario that yes i am able to relate to what the user wants to convey right have fun and entertain you you know entertain your users you are free to uh, bring sense of wittiness sense of engagement any kind of fun in the interaction just that considering the this point that it doesn't offend uh, offend the user which is the fourth point like uh, keeping in the limits how what kind of interaction we can introduce to the user right and use a human language not technical let's say if you are making for the user make the make the animation in terms of user's language right it should not be that much technical if you are if you are writing if you are showing that yes uh, this is the code And, and like if you are showing some animation related to code to the user user does not understand what a code is right you cannot if you write the syntax it will be irrelevant for the user instead of that just you you can use brackets and some a placeholder right because pe people people who have a little idea of what code is but they are not related to syntax or anything like that they'll be able to understand this yes, in code whenever we talk about code there is a bracket there is a slash there is some dots and all semicolons which are associated talk create in that language 
So these are the things that we have to keep in mind while creating micro interactions. So with this, I am I am all I've almost reached to the end of the presentation part. So here is the activity that uh, that uh, I am uh, like I want you all to uh, participate in. Like uh, think of any kind of micro interaction. So you are free to use the chat for. for Putting out your uh, putting out kind of micro interaction that you want to show, want to note it down or anything like that, you can do it. If you uh, if you want to write it down in the chat, think of any kind of micro interaction. How would you make a kind of micro interaction? Let's say for example, for example, searching books. Let's say uh, I I I am giving you a prompt that. How you how will you search a file? Uh, how will you search a file in a library? Create a micro interaction for searching files in the library. How would you do it? How would you do it? If you if you can write it down, like just briefly write it down in the chat. Uploading files and it's uploading animation is one example. Okay. Anything else? A moving hand and three, four books. Yes, that can be a possibility. What else? Processing payments. Yes, processing payments. It's a different kind of micro interaction that you chin. But yeah, can be a magnifying glass and books. Yes, can be a good you know, micro interaction. Searching magnifying glass, moving over books. Okay, this can. Check out an e-commerce app. Yes, it can be a good micro interaction. So as example, if you're looking at any reports showing the not found, yes, definitely. It can be there. Swiping between books, just like swiping stories. Yes, can be a possibility. What about, uh, what about, uh, how do you search? Uh, how do you see? Think in this perspective that, yes, uh, mix, uh, you, this scenario that yes, I am searching a book. So whatever applies to searching of book in any scenario, you can go to that level as well. Let's say I am searching, how do I search a book in the library? Take and you can take something from there as well. Like a shelf is there, four or five books are there, right? I uh, My hand is going, picking up one book and showing some error, putting it back, then picking up right book, putting it back, then picking up right book. Something like that. That can be also one, one kind of micro interaction. Pile of books and one books covered. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. What else? Eye movement. Yes. Swiping reels, just like okay. search result page flying out or watch. Okay. Yeah, that can be there. It's a good, good, good exploration. I, I'll say that. Yes, this is good exploration. But yeah, I would suggest you, uh, as a next step, I would suggest you, like after the session ends, just go try making a micro interaction. Just put uh, pick up some scenarios, some kind of small uh, interactions that might happen in, in uh, any application. Maybe it can be from a uh, um, from an app, app project that you did or something that you are used to. Pick, out, pick, pick up something and then try making a micro interaction out of Remember this uh, this particular uh, framework that is being shown on the screen. This particular feedback. Keep this thing in mind. So, uh, so whenever you are making, make sure that whatever the functionality you are thinking, it is relevant to that functionality. Otherwise, it would it would like lose all its fun, uh, like all its uh, like context. Context should all, always be there, right? Yeah. So after this activity, yeah, we'll talk a little about Lottie because we are going to create Lottie files, right? So what is Lottie actually? So Lottie is a library. Lottie is a JSON uh, animation library which was created by Airbnb back like maybe more than five years now. So it was basically created uh, so that it uh, like we can we can create open source animations. 
So how, like, what kind of these animations are? So these open source animations are actually JSON files, dot JSON files, which you can you can create in After Effects or any uh, any animation software, convert them into JSON codes, and you can directly embed them into websites or anything like that, right? For example, uh, I'll, I'll show you one example. So that is the whole point of making animations open source. So and majority of Lottie files are related to micro interaction. That is that is why I am showing this Lottie here. Otherwise, there is no point of showing here. Uh, showing it here because Lottie Lottie is majorly uh, ma like Lottie has a major share in the micro interactions uh, space. Whenever a micro uh, interaction is created, it's it's mostly Lottie files because Lottie files first first of all it's a very lightweight and scriptable uh, scriptable file. It has nothing to do with actual. Uh, it has nothing to do with the actual colors and shapes and all. It is all created. Uh, uh, it is all created in a form of a like you create a shape and when you export it, it gets converted into form of a code and that you can include in the website. So whenever you include in the website, it will come as it is like how you created in the uh, software, right? Right? <coughs> yeah. So yeah, before coming on to the After Effects part, uh, let's quickly check the time. What is the time? Yeah, we have ample amount of time. So, uh, so these are some UX principles, uh, like motion principles, uh, twelve motion principles, which is applicable whenever we create a, whenever we create any kind of animation, easing, offset and delay, parenting, transformation, value change, masking, overlay, cloning, obscuration, parallax, dimensionality, dolly and zoom. So these are like you can relate it easily with the kind of uh, interaction that is happening because you would definitely have seen this kind of interaction in some form or the another, maybe not the exact same, right? So let's use this thing for creating a micro interaction in After Effects. Uh, yeah, so that is what, and before, after the, we are done with that, we'll be taking questions, right? So coming on to, um, Quickly coming on to the after. So I'll I'll show you what kind of micro interaction I'm going to create. I'll let you know if my screen is visible to everyone. Is it uh, like uh, are you able to see the Illustrator file? Yes. Just let me know if you had. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So this is a kind of uh, this is kind of a, a small illustration I just created before the session started, so that we uh, we cover things in a lesser time. You can create much more complex animations as well, SVG animation, vector animation. That is totally up to you how much ever complexity you want to introduce. But to make sure, because considering that people uh, people with different uh, backgrounds are here. So I, I thought I'm going with something very simple, right? So anything that you want to want to create in uh, in the form of Lottie files or, or kind of micro interaction, you create that into Illustrator first, right? You create it to Illustrator first, and then here you 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 should be able to see. Uh, here you should be able to see uh, this thing. Uh, just a second. Um, just I'm keeping your chat windows also in the, in side by side so that I am able to understand uh, your uh, your. Points as well. Yeah. So coming back to my illustrator file. So after you create the illustration, you have to organize it in a way that you have to organize it in a way that whenever it gets imported into After Effects, you are able to easily work upon it, right? So the best part, how it should be go, it should it should go is the layers which you want to keep separated in After Effects as well keep them separated here as well. Like you, you can name this as layer two. Let's say this outer layer is layer two, inner layer is layer one, right? So this 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 uh, you create and just save it as our illustrator file, right? Save it as illustrator file and that is the whole, that is, that is all you have to do, right? If you are taking any illustration downloaded from internet, organize them first in the form of layer, then import into After Effects. Without it, it will not work or it will generate an error. Right to prevent that, 
I would suggest you whenever you are opening an illustration or anything like that, organize it before in, uh, before importing into After Effects, right? So I'll close this file because I don't need. I I have already saved it. I'll open After Effects, right? Let me know if you are able to see my After Effects window, everyone. Yes, oh, perfect. So what I have to, uh, what I have to do, like maybe some of you might feel that this uh, this interface is intimidating. Yes, for beginners, it might be intimidating, but actually it's not. You have to just sequentially understand what interface of After Effects have, uh, like, uh, like is there. You have to slowly understand it. It's not not a rocket science, but yes, like uh, for people who already know, very good. But people who don't know, no need to worry. It's very easy to. So this is uh, this is called the project layer. So this is the point where I have to in import my illustration, right? How do I import it? I just uh, I will right click on it and will import file. And as soon as I uh, open it, I will see that this file. See, this file uh, I'm able to see, right? Sample micro interaction. So, so I, I, I would just open it and import this into afterwards, right? It will import it here. It's taking a while. I guess I'm um, just let me restart my afterwards. I guess there's some issue. Okay. Oh, okay. See, after and see, this is important. See, layer one and layer two. Right? It's visible, right? Sample micro interaction one composition is created so so anything in uh, anything uh, sort of in uh, after effects first it has to be created in a composition composition is nothing but a frame of the animation space that you want to create so that is composition composition you can create it here like you can see this option if you click it if you click, if you click it it will it will open something like this if you click it here it will open something so you can give uh, you can give name of the micro interaction, right? Preset, see preset is already defined. You can reduce it down to let's say 300 by 300. I'm uh, defining the space and but um, space for, for that. How long I want my interaction to happen? I just keep it at five seconds maybe, not more than that. Five seconds is more than enough. Because I'm creating a micro interaction, it should ideally not be more than uh, more uh, more longer, right? And background color, I'm not keeping anything. I'll, I'll just keep it just like that. Or let's uh, let's keep uh, my background color as maybe white, because the layer that I imported is all black, right? I I clicked on OK, and you see this is the composition that I've created. And whatever composition you will create, that will open here. Now the layer that I imported, that I have to import it just like this here. So now you see that, if you see that, see these, these, these two uh, layers have been imported together, right? As a after uh, Illustrator file, right? You'll be able to see that clearly, right? So now you can see that these are Illustrator layers. This also you can uh, you can animate as it is. But I would not do it because this is this is not treated as pure vector in After Effects because it is not created in After Effects. So for that, what 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 I will do is I'll right click on uh, like I'll right click on both uh, both the layers. Uh, edit. Uh, I'll go to the layer. Mm -hmm. Let's see, create shapes from vector layer, right? You're seeing, you, you, what you have to do is you have to just uh, select both, create shapes from vector layer. So what will happen? 
now you have to you can just delete these files now what will happen these are actually vector layers right they are, these are actually shape layers which is there even if you scale it up by putting uh, you can press scale by selecting these two layers s you can press s s under this and it will scale like and then you can scale up right i just scale up uh, scaled it up a little because it was a little small right this is all i have to do now i'll i'll uh, sequentially animate in these both how can i uh, how can i animate it i'll just uh, animate line animation so see the uh, this this one is this one is text text kind of placeholder animation right so what i will do is what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll select the layer i'll click on add and trim paths once i clicked on trim paths this this uh, this thing is added here so what will happen with trim paths i'll show you so if you if you reduce this uh, if you reduce this 100% to 0% see this is what ha it happens right so how will i actually animate this so what i have to do is i have to define timestamps for that so timestamp let's say i define uh, at 0 seconds i defined a timestamp by clicking this clock right i i went ahead to <coughs> sorry and i uh, i press control shift uh, right arrow to go um, to go forward by 20 frames let's say if i click on uh, if i do once like control shift right arrow it goes uh, by 10 frames one more time 20 frames one more time let's uh, maybe not uh, i'll i'll just keep it to yeah 20 frames right i put a, another timestamp so this because this is complete right Th this has to be the completed state and this has to be the incomplete state so here i'll put the value zero and here I'll put the value 100, right? So see, this animation is, is happening, right? Clear? See, this animation has happened. After this, see, this uh, this animation, we, we, we were talking about the animations being natural, right? So when we are talking about animations being natural, we have to make it natural, right? How do we make the animation natural? We have to select both the keyframes right and put f9 and click on f9 in the keyboard so when you uh, when you click on f9 on the keyboard this becomes a smooth animation and uh, and you can you can implement these smooth animation by going to graph editor so this is the graph editor so you, you select these both uh, keyframe you go to a graph editor and then you see this graph right so I want this animation to happen slowly in the start, but but faster in the faster in the end, right? Or maybe faster in the starting and slowly in the end. So if, if I want it to be faster in the starting and slowly in the end, so what I'll do, I'll I'll pull the this last car, the last uh, handle in this way so that now the peak comes first, right? Peak comes a little early and then it will slow down a little. So see, let's see how uh, let's see how this animation is happening. See, it has become smooth, right? Now there's one more property. Now it, it is all the lines are happening uh, like uh, simultaneously, right? But we have the option to change this sequentially, individually. Go go from simultaneously to individually and see what happens, right? Now there's one error. Why this error is coming? Because you see that, so there are three groups of lines which are there. So whatever group comes first, that animation will happen first. So I'll just rearrange these groups, right? One, two, three. Now you'll see that. <coughs> Sorry. And I'll increase the time to maybe one second, right? Or maybe put it to two seconds if you want. Right, maybe 1.5 second. I will try to do it 1.5 second, 25 frames a second. 
right this this looks fine right so uh, this i have done similar thing i have to do with the other box as well other line as well so i will go quickly do it right i quickly do it or else what i can do is i can just copy this and this frame i'll just copy this in frame pass uh, copy this and then i can select the layer and paste it see what happens same property got pasted right same property got pasted nothing else i have to do it just got pasted in one one simple step right but one thing that should happen is the box should be uh, the box should build first and then text should come right so for for that what i'll do it i'll just move the for the text ka part to a little later stage right and then this till when this gets complete then this will uh, the, then this will start maybe somewhere here this gets complete here and then from here it should start right see you can change the direction of the animation as well so see group uh, group uh, if you go to content group see the path is go uh, in the reverse you make it forward now the animation will change in the different form see right correct it so this is all we have to do nothing else and this animation is complete right we can trim the animation extra space whatever we have uh, utilized we can just trim it off right because we don't need it uh, after this right and that's all what we have to do so this this animation has been created now we have to just export it as a lottie file how do we export it so there is a plugin called as body move and there is a plugin called as lottie file lottie file has own its plugin that you can integrate in after effects but i rely more on body move because it gives more functionality and lottie files uh, plugin is very new as compared to body move but both do the same thing right so what i'll do is i'll select this i'll select this composition right i'll go to this uh, window extension and then body move as soon as i click body move a little processing will uh, will show up and then body move window will open up right i'll just wait for it couple of seconds it will just open up yeah see it got open because i am using extended screen it opening up i can again now the composition name composition name we have kept as chat animation so we'll select this right selected this right destination folder we have to select what kind of destination folder see json file it is getting exported no right we'll just give chat.json save it on desktop that is all that is all i'll click click on render this render is finished nothing else and our lottie file is created now how do we check lottie file my whatever i have created i have to check the type right? so for checking that i i what i'll do is i'll open up lottie mm. I'll open up Lottie. I already have signed up, so I can just log into my account, right? And I can test out my animations, whatever animation I've created. I can just upload it there and see whatever uh, whatever I've created. It will just convert that and give it to me, right? Like I don't need to convert anything. See th these animations I've created it here, so I I keep testing, making animation and testing it. So what you can do is you can just upload the animation what you have created, browse, and text of chat dot JSON. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Upload animation, select. Chat open. See, that doesn't see. This is see. It is open, right? Whatever animation we created, this is open, right? Now what you can do is you can you have to do nothing. It is it is all coded animation. Whatever you have created in After Effects, that has been converted into Lottie, right? And you can actually utilize it in any place, right? Any kind of place you can just utilize it as it is. You can manipulate the shape, how much uh, how faster it's happening. You can loop it. Anything, whatever you want, you can you can do it, right? And then if you want to go, go to your library, you can just go to library. See, this chat is there, publish to public. Uh, if I do publish to public, so I can just uh, publish it and see what happens. So I'll show you some already done Lottie animation. Because it, so this all Lottie animation has been created in After Effects only, posted by someone. And what best thing you can do is you can just select on any animation. See, this is how your your lottie also will be listed. So you can just copy this, paste it on the image section of your website if you're developing it or whatever web, website development supports lottie. And you don't have to think any, anything about that file. That animation has been created. So if I show you the size of this, uh, if I show you the size of the uh, animation that has been created, You'll, you'll be surprised how how small this is. So if I show you, see, it is eight kilobytes on disk, just eight kilobytes. And if you create a GIF of the same file, it would not be any any less than maybe hundred kilobytes. The least least that you will get is hundred kilobytes. Not nothing else. You can just like uh, pressing G, you can just import this into Figma, just like that. Uh, Figma has a plugin on um, Lottie, so we can just log in into your Lottie account. If you have already uh, uploaded these Lottie animations there, then from there you can import it directly into Figma. Yes, XD also supports Figma, uh, Lottie files. It's very easy. Like I'll show you an XD as well. Uh, I'll show you an XD as well. <clears throat> so this was all. This was all I had to share with you. Uh, the complete thing about motion in UX, what is micro interaction, how do you build micro interactions, what are Lottie files, showing you a demo of how to create Lottie files. And yeah, that's it. I'll show you one quick example of uh, how do you in include Lottie files in XD. You just open XD, take any random artboard size. I'll just take maybe this, right? Uh, um, now I have to just import Lottie, right? Whatever I have created, I'll just see. I can just drag and include it here. No rocket science. If you play it, it will wait. See, it will just work just like that. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Aditya, uh, for this amazing amazing session. I think ProUp is also a huge promoter of Lottie. All the offers and all the animations we create, it's there in Lottie, and especially uh, understanding and keeping the app size, you know, very less Lottie comes out to be very helpful, and they're easy to create. And even for the developers, it is easy to, you know, make the code and use True. it. Yeah. Cool. So before we move into the Q and A session, I'll take five minutes of your time guys and sure. quickly share my screen can you guys see my screen yes 
cool, 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 cool. Okay, where did my main uh, cool. Cool. So, uh, first of all, thank you for joining in today. And since most of you are already aware what ProApp is about, I'll still take a few minutes and help you explain about it. ProApp is a platform to help you learn design, and we are building it constantly to make it more accessible and affordable. We have 75 plus design courses and weekly live workshops with people like Aditya himself, design experts uh, across the globe. We have design challenges, almost 25 plus design challenges are already live on the app. We have upcoming masterclasses, which, uh, you know, have been some good video content because we have received feedback that sometimes reading gets boring, but that's all right. We have covered you there as well. We have upcoming job boards as well. And apart from that, what's new? It's the dark mode. We have received so many requests for that. And we took that opportunity and did an entire design revamp for our application as well. So, and I believe some of you might always have, like might have tested it in their applications as well. We are trying to release more stable versions slowly and steadily, but uh, I'm saying slowly, but right now my dev team is sitting behind and working on Saturdays and Sundays to ensure that the stablest version is in your hand, guys. But why am I blabbering and why am I telling even uh, all of this to you? We have an exclusive discount for all our workshop attendees, and we would want all of the pro app users to be pros for a lifetime. We are offering 95% discount on our premium membership, and I'm going to paste a link and the promo code in the section. We are, we are going to do it for very few workshops, maybe two or three more, because what we want to uh, what we want to do is empower people to learn design and become pros for life that's what our mission will always be making design learning more accessible and affordable with this i'm gonna stop sharing the screen i'm just gonna post the link in the chat it will be valid for next 30 minutes and if you have any questions reach out ping me over here or reach out to us at support at the red design thank you so much cool i'll just paste the link and then we can take the q and a Why am I not? I'm not able to paste for somehow. Cool, yes. And yes, at the time, sorry for keeping you on okay, hold. Okay. Cool. So we have a first question in the QA section. It's about how can we say whether this micro interaction is good or is it working for users? So uh, I guess this, this I already covered while I was discussing this. Uh, I mentioned so I'll I'll cover it again. So given that micro interaction is a contextual, is a good or working for users or not. So first thing is like it should be contextual. Like it should be relatable for whatever functionality we are preparing the micro interaction for. That should be relatable. If I am if I am creating an animation for download, that has to be relatable relatable with download. Or uploading whatever whatever I am selecting, right? And second point, what uh, what is it is even though let's say I, I created an interaction of download, but that was something that people don't don't understand, even though they have experienced it. But you are picking something which is very very few uh, very lesser known uh, interaction or lesser known uh, thing, so that people will not be able to get get it. So think of what exists around people and pick some some actions from that to convert that into a micro interaction so considering these two points i'm sure like whatever micro interactions you're working making that will surely work uh guys if you have any more questions please still have me for next five to ten minutes uh in the meanwhile i have one question sometimes people tend to do like overdo it correct so, yeah. uh, and it kind of spoils the entire experience. So, uh, like, how do you decide when it is enough? So, uh, so see, 
designing enough it's a very contextual it's very subjective thing how how much people think that is enough that, that is also a questionable thing because people think yes uh, are the, like this, this much a uh, thing i have made this is okay only like there is nothing wrong with that but we have to understand that what, am i solving that that is the first thing goal goal has to be met second thing is it uh, like uh, we have to understand what sense it is overwhelming or it is overdone because yes. if thing, things are mostly done according to the brand guidelines as a chance will be that it is overdone because there would be space for a ground there would be for grounding because if you follow some kind of visual uh, visual language of that like keep uh, like uh, keep goal of what what is the context let's say it is just a fact thing uh, or uh, and the thing your video and progress audio. thing so if a progress thing is there is it right now uh the video is stuck and we i think kind of lost your voice in the middle for 10 to 20 seconds yeah it's it's a little lag uh is it better now right okay. yeah it's better maybe some issue with the net yeah so yeah that's what so let's say uh, if i know what kind of duration i have to cater to that also helps in deciding uh, like how much i have to do if the duration is smaller let's say 2 or 3 seconds only i'm getting for creating a micro interaction it has to be simplest so that your animation is getting that breathing time to happen completely because uh, whenever you are creating an animation it would not be in, in a way that it just uh, close and then instantly it starts that okay. that has to be like uh, that has to be smoothing that is yeah. starting and end has to be a little space so that space you have considered or not so if it, if yeah. it is considered then simplicity has to be considered based on the time that we are getting if longer time we are getting then we can divide it based on how we create story what for videos same work uh, yeah. same the same thing it will work for micro interactions as well let's say i i talked about the fourth step of building a micro interaction which is loops and modes so if i am considering those points then i have to dissect the micro interaction in that fourth part which will make it less overwhelming but given that it 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 has to be it has to go to a different uh, action uh, item after that is completed otherwise like major consideration is the time what time we are getting are we able to convey the meaning that that we want let's say we, uh, i i get one second i have to show success i need not to write success i have to just put uh, like visually show it that is the simplest i can do so that brainstorming uh, before making the micro interaction is important so that we prevent this we have not received any further questions i think the session itself spoke for <laughs> whatever you have to teach and uh, very few sessions we have is you know which are so so live and people are so engaging till towards the end also we had you know 45 50 people who were still there with us i think that's that's a great great thing thank you so much aditya <laughs> for doing this with right. us and i'll just quickly drop your uh, the saying your linkedin url so that they can reach out to you whenever they want yes. like uh, you can book uh, book a session on adp list also if if anyone wants yeah, to yeah, yeah. that is that is open like but like that availability has to be considered based on what i <laughs> dates i have but yeah like yeah. if anyone wants to talk to me anything like that in general about design anything about design for in any domain i'll be loving to talk about that just the product like just an idea discussion would also do like i'd love to talk i'd love to love to talk in that moment uh, if i can be a help 
in any project that you want to take it up or if if i i can be any help definitely i love to understand your perspective contribute anything if i if it is possible yeah sure thank you so much for even saying that um, <laughs> i believe that's what makes our community so stronger and thank you for making the community stronger and doing this for us uh, so thank you everyone have a happy weekend we have another one more workshop tomorrow we'll you'll see my face again tomorrow <laughs> but thank you so much adit and thank you everyone have a great yeah, week thanks thanks for thanks everyone bye -bye. have a great day bye